uh, just a few uh, seconds or a, a minute uh, ago, we were together with Sveta from um, uh, from London, and we were talking about the, the perfect or at least the client experience that we want to design. What are the challenges there? But now we are switching to a very very interesting, trendy topic, uh, which is, I think, the ultimate level of digitalization or digitization. Uh, I have the pleasure to welcome Emilian Enf, uh, co-founder and CEO of Recheck. Hi, hi, Emo. Hi, Ivan. And uh, congrats for everything that you do with this event. Uh, it seems like a huge success. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, the success is all yours because you guys are the experts. And so far, the knowledge that has been shared is really amazing. Uh, so I hope that everyone that is watching us on the various platforms is really enjoying and, of course, taking uh, a fair share of the knowledge that we already um, produced. So now we're going to speak about NFTs beyond the speculation. Uh, really interesting stuff. I'm going to give you the floor. Uh, you can share your screen and, and, and start your presentation. I'll be just in the backstage watching and hearing what you're saying to us. But now I'm just giving the time to, to you. Perfect, we see everything. Great. <clears throat> okay, uh, thank you, Ivan, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, really happy to, uh, to share the next maybe 20 or 30 minutes with you. Uh, my name is Emilian Enef, and I'm the CEO of a company called Recheck. Uh, just uh, very brief briefly, Recheck is uh, one of the pioneers in the development of practical blockchain solutions, at least in Southeast Europe. We are a Dutch-Bulgarian startup, and uh, from the beginning of our company, we are very much focused on uh, developing very practical, very meaningful blockchain solutions. These are products that really address some actual problems, uh, provide uh, value, and we are very far from this uh, speculative aspect related to blockchain technology. Uh, and uh, this is something that uh, I, will I will cover also uh, in, uh, in my slides. Uh, so, a <clears throat> few words at the beginning. Uh, if you really like uh, NFTs, please keep in mind that uh, in the first slides, I will be a, a bit negative, a bit uh, pessimistic about uh, NFTs, and uh, I will highlight some of the negative aspects or speculative aspects related to the NFTs. And please stay for the second part of my presentation, which will be about uh, what you can do now with the NFTs, uh, what is the meaningful things that uh, you can uh, build on top of the NFTs and uh, how we can use them in order to, uh, to bring uh, uh, some actual result, to achieve some actual results. Okay, uh, so what is the NFT landscape right now? So on one hand, we have this uh, hype and so we have this uh, potential. And it's growing and it's growing, although uh, in the last uh, few months, actually there is a kind of a cooling down and uh, a small decline in terms of a number of uh, NFTs that are being sold in terms of how the market is growing. But still, uh, there is huge hype and uh, it is very much related to this uh, general Web3 movement. But on the other hand, there is uh, a lot of... Uh, I can call it a nonsense. Uh, I can use uh, some other words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, profanity words. Uh, uh, and uh, there is a lot of speculation. And it is a kind of gambling. It is a kind of casino. And uh, this is something that I personally don't like. Uh, but uh, I will try to balance uh, the both aspects uh, in my presentation. So um, at this moment, the NFTs are like one-sided coin. So the image or the video file or the PDF presentation, uh, the digital file is the NFT itself. What does it mean? You can open this file in a browser or you can see this in a, a NFT marketplace or uh, in uh, some other environment. And in some cases, perhaps in most of the cases, you can easily download this file and you can replicate it, you can copy it, uh, you can uh, upload it uh, to some other marketplace. And <clears throat> there is a lot of room uh, for fraud, for manipulation, a lot of room uh, to, to steal the intellectual property of somebody else and to present this as your uh, digital art uh, or your uh, NFT. 
And uh, this is something that is changing uh, and I'll provide uh, some uh, few more practical uh, examples in the next uh, slides that the NFT should not be necessarily uh, only one-sided coin. It means the NFT should not be the, the video file or the image that you see on the website. Uh, another aspect of the NFT is that uh, they're very much, uh, they're very popular and they're uh, used very much uh, for profile pictures. So it is about bragging rights. It is about using the NFT as a, some kind of a status symbol. Uh, it is about uh, uh, showing off, uh, demonstrating that you're really part of this uh, community. You're really part of this project. You joined early and uh, you claim this uh, monkey picture or uh, whatever <laughs> image, uh, and you put this on, on your Telegram, on your Facebook, uh, on your uh, Discord profile, and you can uh, really uh, show to the rest of the world that you're special <clears throat> because uh, you purchased, or in some cases, you just uh, stole <laughs> this, <laughs> <laughs> this NFT. So it's about the bragging rights. It's about uh, really uh, demonstrating uh, that uh, you belong to this uh, community, which is not necessarily something bad, but uh, uh, there are other positive things that you can do with the NFTs. And uh, we have seen these uh, NFT deals, huge, huge uh, NFT deals. Uh, for example, uh, some guys selling NFTs for 20 million uh, euro for 30 million euro, uh, meaning um, the, this amount is paid in crypto, but uh, the equivalent in fiat money is 20 million. And what you need to know is that uh, there are many under the table deals. What does it mean? It means that uh, actually uh, this is not the, the real market price or the fair market price of this NFT. So you pay this 20 million or something, and then there is this agreement that uh, you pay back, you return uh, some part of the money, or uh, you pay this huge amount, but then uh, you provide, uh, or the guy, the, <clears throat> the seller uh, will provide some additional services to you, or you just need the PR material. You just need to get into the news. And these are not actual uh, market price. So this is something that uh, you need to know. Uh, and it creates a lot of hype, a lot of enthusiasm, uh, but uh, it's uh, not something realistic, it's not something tangible. Another thing, uh, and here I'm going to this section uh, and uh, I'm uh, trying to, to summarize, to explain what are the positive aspects related to the NFT. So what I mentioned so far uh, is about the uh, speculative uh, aspect. It's about uh, what I call gambling, what I call uh, just going to the casino. But you know what happens with the lottery and with the gambling? Usually you participate, you buy your tickets, and uh, you didn't win. <laughs> and uh, this is the part that I uh, don't like. Uh, and also the part where you have uh, all this uh, <clears throat> hype around the NFTs. Just uh, one example that I didn't mention is that in some cases, in some marketplaces, for example, 80 to 90% of the transactions are fake. Meaning that people just generate some transactions because they can earn some tokens uh, and there is nothing real behind these transactions. So also pay attention to this. But the NFTs can be used for meaningful purposes. You can do some uh, actual practical stuff with these NFTs. And uh, what are these aspects? First thing is uh, that, and maybe this is the most important part, the NFT is here to stay. The NFT is not necessarily a scam and the NFT is just an emerging standard for digital ownership. And the NFT, you can look at it as a piece of code called smart contract that says that you are the owner of this digital asset. asset. It could be a digital file or something that is uniquely identified. It could be an image. It could be uh, even a reference to a physical asset like a house or a car. And this is something that will become a standard for digital ownership. And this is unique. This is huge. This is something <clears throat> uh, that will grow in the next years. Uh, so 
if you remember one thing from my presentation, uh, I suppose this is the, the most essential part. NFT is just a standard for digital ownership and it is here to stay. Uh, speaking about positive aspect, aspects and uh, what are the practical things that you can do with the NFTs, um, I believe that this hype with the NFT is an excellent opportunity to educate the market, to explain this abstract concept that you, as an ordinary person, user, citizen, you can really control your essential data, your personal data, and you can use this in order to manage your online presence, to really to claim like uh, important uh, documents, uh, certificates, verifiable credentials about you. And uh, people start to become curious. They, they start to read, they, they start to uh, experiment with the technology. So this is really crucial because uh, in the early stage of each technology, uh, usually there is fraud, there is scam, there is um, uh, this part with the, with the speculation and um, a lot of bad things happen sometimes, <clears throat> even with uh, money wandering, etc. But people need to get to know more about this technology, need, need to play with this. So this is the positive thing about, uh, uh, about uh, the NFTs right now, that people uh, really start to play with the blockchain tools, really uh, start to, to be curious what the heck is this NFT and uh, what are the practical things that I can do with it? And I really like uh, <clears throat> this um, opportunity to, to educate uh, the market and to bring more people into this rabbit hole, which I call <laughs> blockchain. Okay, <clears throat> and um, the next thing that is uh, really <clears throat> crucial, in my opinion, is uh, this aspect with uh, digital wallets. So, <clears throat> Please mark my words. In the next few years, more and more people will have these digital wallets. There is huge growth in number of users uh, for the last few years that download these uh, digital wallets. And here I'm speaking about non-custodial digital wallets where you really have the private key. You really control these uh, crypto assets and you're really the, the owner of, of this crypto asset because the NFT is, is just a crypto asset. And um, this growth in, in digital wallets is something that is very much related uh, to the uh, emerging Web3 movement, a decentralized internet where people will have their digital wallets with their uh, essential personal information, their crypto assets, and with these digital wallets, they will do the authentication, they will log in into different platforms and in these platforms, uh, they will prove that, uh, for example, they have this in this age and they have this education or maybe this demographic facts like gender or uh, maybe even purchasing history uh, or uh, something about their uh, education. <clears throat> and they will take advantage of different services. Uh, but here, the essential part is that they will continue to be in control of their personal information so once they do something in this platform, for example, they use a service, they will log out with their digital wallet. Maybe there'll be some update of the information in their digital wallet, or maybe there'll be a new NFT that they will claim in this platform. And then they will go to another network, to another platform, do the same thing, authenticate with the wallet, uh, disclose certain information, and here uh, they can do this selectively. They can decide what kind of information uh, I would like to disclose about myself and uh, use another service. And um, there is something called European Digital Identity Wallet. There is a regulatory framework that is being developed right now, and it is quite an advanced stage. And uh, this is the positive uh, thing about NFTs that uh, this the NFT could be one of the crypto assets, one of the tokens that you can manage, you can store in this digital wallet and you can do this um, uh, in a way that uh, you can extract more value from the NFTs. Uh, and <clears throat> I would like to give you some uh, use cases, some practical examples uh, about uh, what you can do now with the NFTs and in the coming years uh, and uh, how you can use NFTs for meaningful purposes, for meaningful uh, and practical use cases. NFTs are very, very good for exclusive membership. So you, uh, for example, you join early this project and you claim the NFT and uh, then uh, the NFT is in your digital wallet. And 
once uh, you uh, do the login uh, or uh, sign in with the N with your digital wallet and prove that you're the holder of this NFT, there are some exclusive perks, benefits. Uh, uh, it's like an exclusive membership that you can manage with this NFT. You can open a secret space or like a secret to, uh, web page or a secret channel on Discord. And then uh, this is something that is ex exclusively for you <clears throat> as an uh, exclusive experience because uh, you are the owner of this NFT and only you can access this content, only you can access this uh, secret space. And uh, another thing that I already mentioned related to the previous slide, uh, really uh, taking advantage of uh, some special terms, uh, promo codes, um, uh, maybe um, some uh, ticket for exclusive events, or maybe uh, something uh, that uh, uh, is part of the loyalty programs. So <clears throat> again, the principle is the same. Uh, you prove that you are the holder of this NFT and you claim uh, these digital items that are dropped only for you. And uh, it, it is really a game changer in the loyalty industry, in the loyalty, uh, I'd say, marketing aspect of, uh, of growing the business. Uh, because, for example, you can claim this um, uh, exclusive content of uh, some celebrity or uh, exclusive course or exclusive uh, personalized message or whatever. And uh, this is something that is uh, really marketing uh, in, in the next level because uh, it unlocks a lot of opportunities for engagement and for world building. Uh, another practical example is um, about um, using uh, the NFT as a tool for secure distribution of content. And so this is especially important for the creator's economy. And this could be uh, like a journalist or uh, musicians or, or vloggers, uh, creators of video content. Uh, and uh, they can upload a video file or a text or image any digital content, it can be encrypted <clears throat> and it can be linked to, a, to an NFT. So if you are the holder, if you buy this NFT, they, then you can get access to this uh, digital content. But here the really interesting part is that for the digital creators, it gives them protection and security on one hand, and also this opportunity to monetize directly their content and to have some long-term recurring revenue because uh, they can uh, program some royalties uh, related to the NFTs. They can receive some parts of, uh, of the price when this uh, content is being uh, sold to, to the next buyer. Uh, so in terms of business models, we can do very, very interesting things with NFTs. I'm reaching the end of my presentation. And uh, one of the really hot topics now is uh, this metaverse. It's, it's just a virtual reality. But here, <clears throat> uh, and this is really uh, essential part, uh, uh, please pay attention to, <clears throat> you have this virtual reality now. And <clears throat> you put this uh, set uh, and uh, you join certain metaverse. But the game changer now is that you have this digital object and these digital objects in the, in the metaverse, they can be owned with NFTs. So you can really manage ownership of digital objects uh, in the metaverse. And that's my final slide because I can see now that Ivan is joining. So I'm going to the end of my presentation. Uh, really briefly here uh, and topic I really love, using NFTs for charities. Uh, and this is very much related to the purpose of this event. So you give, you make a uh, donation and you have this uh, batch of honor that you really, as an NFT, that you really uh, donated to this cause. Uh, and this is something that uh, I, can, I can speak about, but I assume we don't have a lot of time. Thank you very much for your attention. Oh, thank you, Emilian. Thank you, really. Um, you touched upon some of, of the most interesting things related to NFT and the uh, digital ownership. Um, I, will, uh, I will say, um, imagine yourself, you're standing in front of a, you know, a class of, of uh, children that are really, let's say, in the age of five, six, seven years. Uh, they know what TikTok is. They know what is, let's say, an avatar and, mm -hmm. and everything else. 
they know what is Minecraft, <laughs> which is <laughs> something very important. Uh, but how are you going to describe the NFT and the metaverse to them? Hmm. You know, uh, they're much more uh, educated than us. They're born digital. <laughs> this generation, Alpha, uh, this generation Z, you know, they, they have these digital skills uh, at uh, unmatched level. So uh, I will tell them the following. Okay, uh, dear children, uh, maybe you won't uh, uh, be a owner of, uh, of a house or a car but you will own digital or crypto assets. So mm -hmm. this crypto asset, this NFT is an opportunity for you uh, to, to be in control of something uh, that should be meaningful, something that is valuable. So this is the key to manage this digital uh, ownership. And it is an opportunity for you uh, to participate in a new economy where people will be in control of uh, their essential data They'll be able to monetize directly content and to exchange value directly with others. So uh, it's a bit abstract and maybe a bit complicated, but these are things, these are thoughts yeah. that come to mind. Um, thank you. And when you talk about monetizing, so you're meaning that uh, the individual will be uh, a company of itself. So he will be, a, uh, um, let's say, not not the freelancer as we know it nowadays, but he will be able to grow wealth, digital wealth, of course, based on his, you know, skills and stuff and uh, mm -hmm. adaptability and speed. Uh, but how is on, on how will be on practice? Uh, how will this monetizing happens, actually, monetization? Um, maybe I can give an example. Um, and I believe this is the future of work, actually. Uh, so again, you have your digital wallet and your digital identity. Uh, you join a, a platform, a network, and you do something useful for this network. You do some work. Okay. And you get uh, some reward, which is usually tokenized. And this is based on your contribution. This is based uh, on the quality of your work. And perhaps also you get uh, some update in your reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, some other peers, they can vote for you, uh, they can validate that uh, you're really good professional and you did this in this work. So then you claim some tokens or you can claim an NFT. Um, and then you go to another network, another platform with your digital wallet. And since you have proven this track record, since you have, you're the holder of these tokens, these NFTs that uh, are very good validation about your skills, about your experience, then you're in a very good position <clears throat> to get some better rewards. Again, usually tokenized rewards, but it could be also fiat money. Uh, so it's very much related to this decentralized autonomous organization where you have this, this freedom to join interesting product, uh, projects, do some meaningful creative or other technical work and uh, have uh, the, the direct return and monetization based on some tokens that you claim. Yeah, and then what is the process of turning this, um, you know, wealth, uh, your digital wealth into something materialistic? Let's say I want to, uh, as you already mentioned, I want now to buy a car that is physical asset. Mm -hmm. We will be able to buy this with my uh, NFTs. Uh, I believe it's very much about uh, getting some market premium, some uh, higher market price, because you can prove, for example, uh, some facts about this car or this house. For example, the passport of the vehicle, the passport of the real estate could be on the blockchain. So you can prove certain performance. You can uh, prove that you have this good maintenance history and uh, it could be also based on validated facts on the blockchain with a very high security and trust. Mm -hmm. So in a, in a better position to get a, a better price. But uh, in, in the more personal sense, um, it is about really proving with these verifiable credentials, with, uh, with your diploma, with your skills and courses that you're a good <clears throat> professional uh, and getting uh, some, some better terms. But again, at some point, you need to exchange these tokens, these NFTs, so the marketplaces will stay. Uh, and the marketplaces will play very essential part in this, but I believe that uh, in the next years we'll see a very huge decrease in this scam and speculation, and there'll be a new ways to prove the actual utility mm -hmm. of the of the NFTs and the tokens. And 
uh, all these uh, NFTs that are just speculative, they will see this decline in prices. Um, do you see when it, when it comes to you know projecting the future, uh, um, widening the gap, so creating a huge gap between physical and uh, you know virtual in terms of uh, having a, a bunch of people that are really you know now smart and they start you know not only uh, investing in some way, but learning, teaching, shaping the idea of, you know, NFTs and uh, digital wallets, metaverse, and then other ones that they're just not because they're old, let's say, but they're just like uh, old fashioned. I don't know. Uh, do you see both words colliding in some way or just I, I actually being separated from each other? Uh, I would very much like to see these both worlds merging. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> there is a new term that's coming. It's called digital. Uh, I mean, physical and digital being combined, interwoven. Uh, so this is something uh, that will happen. Uh, almost all valuable physical objects will have their digital twins on the blockchain. And yeah. will, it's about it will be about not only the physical object, but what is the data behind this physical object. Yeah. And blockchain could be the way to, to manage this. But you're raising a very important question because uh, at least in, in our region in Bulgaria, there is this huge gap of digital literacy. And yeah. we have so many people that are still not using smartphones and that are lagging behind. And it, it is a, it's a big issue. Uh, so we need a lot of education. We need really a simple user experience. And uh, we need to get rid of this um, tribalism and division and for example, this is something that I really hate about, about blockchain, yeah. uh, that uh, I really like this protocol and I'm only for Bitcoin, I'm only for Ethereum, I hate all <laughs> the other guys and uh, uh, we're going to rule the world with our new protocol and uh, this is something <laughs> stupid. Yeah, uh, I think this is the, the beginning of, um, of a journey that will be quite unmature at, at the starting point. Uh, and we'll witness, you know, it's uh, peak, let's say in 10, 20 years or something like that, where people will, will live in that, you know, cohesive environment where uh, everything that is uh, physical has its digital twin, as you mentioned. And actually, you're verifying the digital twin in order to own the physical one. So you're seeing everything that is related to this twin and, and the verification is really 100% Sure, that is mm -hmm. actually something really important because I know we check from the background and I know what your guys doing with blockchain and verification. It's really uh, meaningful uh, stuff. So um, thank you so much for being with us today. It was real pleasure. Uh, we've just uh, opened a little bit the door. Scratch of, of the this surface. World. Yes, scratch <laughs> the surface. I would love to talk with you once again about this topic, uh, maybe on my LinkedIn Live podcast uh, in the in the couple of next weeks. So um, thank you once again. Have a great Saturday, and we are back in a short with the next presentation. Thank you, Ivan. Bye, everyone.